Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Enlightened Up podcast. I'm Craig Shoemaker, your host and the founder of Laughter Heals. This is about laughter healing. It's also about enlightening the fuck up, okay? That's what we need to do more of in our society. We have guests on our show. Make sure that you, um, you know, tag us and all that stuff, you know, pass the word around. That's how I used to do it in the old days, by the way. A lot of me is about the old days. I was talking to our guest about this earlier, but... You know, I'm like, I'm, I come from a world of passing notes. That's how you, or you, or you actually put a poster on a telephone pole. I don't even know if a phone pole exists anymore. Anyway, whatever you do, put a poster on your telephone pole and tell them about Enlightened Up the Podcast and spread the word. We need to spread the word about laughter and joy. Now, I'm going to get right to the guest. I have to tell you, uh, I've been in this business a long time. And the unfortunate aspect of headlining is you don't get to run into many people. Right. Because you're headlining on the road and you are, you know, I'm not a hang guy, especially having a family. And um, so I see this guy went on before me the other night. And that means nothing because they just have this lineup of David Spade and Jeffrey Ross. I mean, it's like an all-star lineup, Adam Ray. And it's crazy. He goes on before me. And I've heard about him for years, and I'm friends with Heather McDonald, and he's regular on Heather McDonald. I see, I see him on their posts. I am so pissed that I don't know this guy for years, but now we do, and I got to watch him. He's brilliant. Chris Frangel is our guest today. Nice to nice to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm, it's I'm, a pleasure. It's my pleasure. I know. Well, well you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of yours. I've know I know your stuff very well. Yeah, you, you know, you've been a legend. You do. In this I game don't know your time. stuff at all. I know, you know, it's funny. It's, it's funny, like at all. I, I know. I I have like flown below the radar for many, many, many years. Um, but you're above the radar. You're like a big draw. And yeah, you know, no, popular. I do well. I do well in in my little world. You know, I created mm. a little world with Chelsea lately which was a great mm. thing for us back then and, and now with podcasting and stuff like that uh, but like in the hollywood I, i've never been known i mean out like that show we did the other night was a, a lot of big yeah. heavyweight guys yeah. and um how you do know, you feel when you go into those do you do you, you know I you have seem to, very confident. I'm not. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not either. Insecure. I put on. Are you insecure? I, I, I Did put you on put a very that false on? bravado. I knew I liked yeah, you. yeah. It's definitely a very false. As a matter of fact, driving there, I, you know, I, I just get all like, do I need to be with these guys? Oh like, my god, it's these, so funny. You know, we all do. I think. I think. Do we really? I, I think David Spade walked in and goes, "Hey, I don't know if I fit in here." I think so. Really? That, actually, uh, I know Spade a little, and I believe that Spade suffers from that quite a bit. Actually, yeah. I think we all. As a matter of fact, I was talking to two guys. Um, uh, and uh, Adam Ray and Andrew Santino who are both there. Yes, and we're all the same way. Like you know, talking about the clubs we play on yeah. the road, and this one won't have me. They they will have me. The reason I, I'm not their style, mm. and, and we all have the same. So yeah, I'm definitely never 100 percent comfortable being in that world. So I'm that's why so I'm not a comedy store improv guy. I love to hear that. You know, I'm not a hang guy like you said. I'm, I'm I feel weird being in you know. <laughs> In between Joe Rogan and 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 uh, and right. I'm, I'm sure they're all great. You don't feel guys. like part of the club, do you? Have I that never thing? felt like part of the really? club. Really, no. I love this. Yeah, let's just form our own club. <laughs> you know, you know what? The Insecure Club. And by the way, our club will probably be bigger and more popular right. than the popular I agree. club. <laughs> I think what, I, and maybe this is the same way with you. I think what happened with me is early on in my when I moved to LA. Yeah, I moved into the Valley pretty early on, and I stayed kind of in the Valley. <laughs> And I think that was why yeah. I never became like in the club. I never was an over the hill guy. I was never in in the, with the Hollywood scene. Oh no! I stayed in Studio City, Sherman Oaks, this area. Oh, I and took it even further out here in Westlake with yeah, four right, kids. Right? Yeah. Oh so yeah. There you go. That's, That's out of the club. Yeah, you're out. I watched the Comedy Store documentary. Did you watch I it? I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to know your thoughts watching the Comedy Store documentary directed by Mike Binder. Yeah. I, have you ever been a Comedy Store guy? Yeah, I'm on the wall. You're on the wall, yeah. yeah. You're on the wall, right? No, I'm not on the no. wall. No. This I've, is shocking to me. I've probably been to the Comedy Store five times. You're my new legend. Like, yeah. I, you're like an <laughs> icon to me. Once I yeah. saw you work, I'm going, oh my God, this guy's got chops. Yeah. I mean, are you, you're not on the wall? No, I'm not on the wall. I, I'm so glad you're here just for my own self-esteem is rising. Damn, no, I'm like glad. Moment no, by moment. Yeah, yeah. You know, you are you are like a legend in this business. And <laughs> and sh how long? Like, are you a comedy store guy? If you no, went in, if I was never in, any guy. Yeah, I just happened to be a regular. I kind of did it a weird way. Like, I got, I, it's, I never did. I don't do short sets. Right. But all these places let me headline. 
Yeah. Like Comedy Magic Club. Right, I'm one right, of right. the few people. I don't do that all, you know, millions of comics a night. No, I just, this is my night. I got an opener, and that's it. Right. I'll throw a magician on at the most. But all these plays, I headlined the improv. Yeah. And I was told the reason that other people, I don't know if I'm going to run this theory by you, the, other, the reason that people, I want to hear you guess. What do okay. you think the reason is that headliners, well, back in that, those days, it might have changed now. Right. Why wouldn't they headline at the improv in West Hollywood, in town? Do you have um, any idea why? I, I, I mean, this is, I, I don't know. I, Speculate. No. I would say because they don't want to burn their material to, mm. I don't know. Here's what I was told. Okay. They feared that if they didn't pack it out, that that word would get out and that'd be the end. Oh, of I them. could totally see that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. As I, you know, I should have thought of that. Yeah. As my, I know guys who have have done it. Uh, they Every now and again, they'll do a headlining set on a yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday now, these days. And there'll be guys who panic that, you know, they're going to see their tickets on whatever Groupon or, or giving out a <laughs> right, code for right, free right, tickets. Right, right. I've seen it. I've seen, you know, somebody just, like somebody big, Doug Benson or somebody was doing a Wednesday 10 yeah. o'clock show there and, and they were just giving out the code. Oh, yeah. And then they go, oh, he's a coupon comic. Then, right. Then, that's right. the end of you. I, yeah, I mean, I, honestly, it happened when we did this show the other night. I've been kind of tracking that show a little bit. Oh, yeah. You know, and they, they get great head, you know, Unbelievable. Uh, people you know, every night, whatever. And they pay, by the way. I know. The improv and comedy stores pay 20 bucks or something. Yeah, yeah. They paid, you know, decent amount for in town right. doing 15 minutes. So you kept track and they, they well, were. because I kept seeing sold out, sold out, sold out. Yes. And then I, Except uh, when you and I the were. The one there. we were. Oh, my God. Here's the one that's not going to They canceled the second yeah. show. But it turns out, it, you know, it was a pretty decent crowd. I thought and, it was. And, yeah. I'm, and I was a little shocked that they are getting people to come out. Hollywood's a tough town to get people to come out in. You're uh, right, it you is. Know, yeah, so. and it's the. I was going to say the hipsters, but I told you earlier. You can't say that. You can't anymore. say that word anymore. Right, right, right. All these words that we grew up with have switched over. Yeah, we were talking about that before we came on. It's, you know, swag. Like I walk in, my assistant's 25 years old. She goes, "Hey, you get sweat. You swagged out." And I'm like, yeah. That's, yeah, that's meant shit. We all get. Remember that's free stuff. Remember radio? Yeah. You know that's yeah, not radio. even existing anymore. <laughs> no, I would always go in and ask for the CDs. Did yeah. you ever do that? Oh God, yeah. You did that? C CDs. It's over. Yeah. You well, remember? But remember, they had those the promotional CDs. Yes. Yeah, right, right, right. Which were brand new CDs. They just had a little cut in them. Yeah. It uh -huh. meant they were promotional. Uh, I'll, I, all my CDs on my rack. <laughs> I still have one. Have yeah. a little cut in them i know because of, that was swag that's what you got but now you can dress swag and a goat we grew up with what was a goat as a goat was somebody who dropped the ball or missed a field goal or whatever <laughs> right. they were the goat of the game well and they're famous goats yes. you know the the they missed the field goal with buffalo bills you know right you, you've scott got, norwood scott norwood so we know the goats but now it means greatest of all time. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. I don't even know how this all happened. I don't either. I think they're, they're doing it to fuck. As with a us. matter of fact, I forget the name of. He was a uh, cartoonist in the Daily News. Do would, would do sports stuff. Bill Gallo, I think his name was, died years ago. But I grew up in New York, and he would do Goat of the Day, and who it was the guy who basically put horns on whoever <laughs> right. dropped the ball or missed, you know, missed yeah. a field goal. So that was I don't know I even know how this like like. Was there a selection committee on these words? I don't yeah. know how this happened where there's this, let's take this and make it the opposite. Yeah, or, now it's the GOAT, greatest yeah. of all time. Have you ever done this one before? You say, hey, let's hook up. Like hook up. Yeah, well, hook up, I, I guess I've been, I see it now as hooking up, like getting together, sex. That's what a hookup to me no. means. But hook up back <laughs> used to be like get have drinks or whatever. Yeah, let's yeah. hook up. Right. And it bothers me that yeah. I use this language <laughs> and now I get a me too tag because yeah, I said, because you I said to the wrong no, person. No more hooking up. No more hooking oh, up. Oh God. It's a whole hey, other thing. Now. I'm going to change the subject for a second. I want to come back to this uh, okay. for your insecurities, but uh, I, I will tell the audience, go see Chris. I, I'm telling this is like, I know pros. I really do. I book pros all the time. I have a company that we book country clubs and Corporate gigs. You're going to be my number one guy over Mark Eddy now. Do. Mark oh, Eddy's Mark always my, oh, okay. he's my number one. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. I'm better than Mark Eddy. I know you are. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but your comedy chops are just there. Where did you develop in Long Island? Uh, a little bit. A little bit in Long Island. Early on, east end of Long Island, uh, Governor's Comedy Clubs mm. um, uh, out there. Uh, but, but mostly here. Mostly here yeah. in, in, in bar shows. I came to L.A. got to be almost 30 years ago. So... Um, yeah, I, I was a bar show guy. I and came up with all a lot of those guys we saw the other night, Jeff Ross and and a lot of those guys. So, uh, but yeah, I I did it. Who had a rough time in bar shows? I'll bet. 
Uh, a, a lot people of guys like have Jeff Ross, time in bar shows. Andy Kindler. Yeah, I yeah. worked with him oh, in the man. bar shows. These are they became very popular with the hip crowd. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I <laughs> right bar shows. They're they're back then were were a strange thing because they gave you you, you built up bad muscles in bar shows. That's you know, right. yeah. yeah. And, and then you go out on the road and mm. and you had it took me years. Or to they're good of, muscles too. They're good There's muscles two, to have. Two ways to look at. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. But um, you're ready for anything. Ready for way. anything. You're That's ready. why I like that night. What we did the other night. It was in the round. It was outdoors. There was a lot going on with, you know, <laughs> helicopters and police cars. It was almost like someone like you had an ex that right. sent a helicopter <laughs> exactly. during your set You're only, by the way. hovering over the stage the entire time. <laughs> Literally, like you were the criminal that I they know. had in the infrared. Yeah, yeah. There he so, is. <laughs> it's like hovering it's, over you. You know, you, you build up. When you do it long <laughs> enough, one of those things don't bother you anymore. You've done You've done it as you have. You've done it everywhere, right. and, and you, you're you're ready for anything. I pride myself on being a pro. It's one of the things I I'm proud of. Yeah. I'm a pro on the road. I yeah. show up on time. I don't cause any trouble. Yeah, you're with me on that. Um, you know, and, these and radio think, the radio DJs always go. He's here on time. Yeah, he's prepared. Right. He's not walking in. The first words out of their mouth or what? What do they usually say? The for the comedians. What do they say to the DJs when they get there? Do you, the bad ones. Do you know what they say when they no, get there? No, no, no. Oh, right. man, I just woke up. Oh, just woke up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just right, woke up. Right, right. They don't want to hear that. Yeah, they always tell me, like, you, you look put together for <laughs> 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, yeah, well, I, you know, I know, I know the gig. I met my doppelganger here. This right. is so funny that we've yeah. never even crossed paths before. Yeah, it's crazy uh, how. But I think that's why I continue to work, thankfully, in this yeah. town is because I'm, I'm not a problem. There's a lot of problems, as we know. Oh, yeah, yeah. exactly. But <clears throat> but if you don't put asses in seats, they'll take the problem people. That is the, the problem people who draw, That's they don't care. No, exactly. I, I had a guy, one I, one time they were angry at me because I asked for the numbers. And they're like, ready. they fired me, you know, from this club. Yeah. Really big club. You know, they didn't right. like that I asked for the numbers. You know, the oh, numbers right. on how many people attended because right. I got a piece of the door. Yeah. Oh, they were mad at me. So, oh, we don't want him. He's a diva or whatever. Meanwhile, the guy the week before, they couldn't wait to have him back, and he and he burnt down the hotel room. They had to switch hotels. <laughs> yeah, the big yeah, fines no. and everything that they had to pay. Right. Didn't show up for radio. Oh, that guy, no, since he's a, yeah. he's on Saturday Night Live, oh, boom. Right. They'll book him the following week. Yeah, I've you know. heard stories. You know, you hear the stories. Yeah, oh, yeah. The stories. And, yeah, it's it's crazy. They but turn their head when they're a star. It's the same with sports. It's the same with athletes. It. They, and I understand. They make them money. <laughs> I, they're, you know, I understand that they have to pay their rent, too. You know, and a, a guy who could sell a, a lot more chicken wings and beers and, and tickets than I can is yeah. going to be ahead of me. I get that. But mm. if you got to fill 52 weeks... It do, it wouldn't kill you to put me in one of them because I I'm I don't cause a problem. And not only that, you put a pro in there because the people that go, thank you, are seeing a professional exactly. show. Exactly, they are seeing something that they're going to put on Yelp and say that's the most I've ever laughed. Right. This was from the moment he took the stage until the moment he left or she left. I had a wonderful experience, and there's right. a value in that. Totally, that's it's what it's what what will happen is when that when after they see a guy like you or me. They'll go, you know, for an hour. Who's just, you know, killing for the most part. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll go up Monday back to work and say, oh, you know where I went the other night? I went to the funny moment, blah, blah blah blah, and it was amazing. Yeah. However, if they go see, I'm, I'm going to use a name here, and I hope they're not a friend of yours. <gasps> really? Well, You're really going to use a name? I'm That's going to so use a cool. Name. I, I would. I most guests will not do that. I'm going I have to, to call, ask them oh, afterwards. I, oh, you, You're you, going with a name? You have to stop me from doing. I that. I thought you but, were going to have to. Do, you would do a type of person no, who came no. from a. I from a movie you, business. Uh, that will get, well, it's all that. It's Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven is a guy who's who, for whatever reason, has somehow started to do stand up. Yeah, it's not great. He's trying. I get it, but he doesn't. He's not a headliner, and he shouldn't be headlining. But he <sighs> does sell tickets. Yes, and uh, and and people, but people who go will will look at that and go, oh, that stand up comedy. Like I, I I won't go back. So wow. this, so I think in a way the club screws themselves by by doing a Jeremy Piven. And not a guy like you and me, where the club goes. When I used to go to comedy clubs on Long Island as a kid, I didn't know who was performing. I went because I, I figured knew they these guys be, are pros, they pros and they're going to be great. And they only book pros. Yeah, then. yeah, right. That's the so, only way they did it because there was no social media. Exactly. Now they book you on how much social media yeah. you have, right? You pro, you pro, how many followers you have. You could have a career. Go buy followers. Right. You, you know, and exactly. you'll have a career. Exactly. But we have it to back it up. See, we can back up every show. We can handle any condition. 
When I came out here, I came out. I moved out here with two guys that you're going to know. Yeah. No one knows who these guys are. Anymore. Oh, I'll know them. Oh, you definitely will. Yeah. Studs. Yeah. And it was the three of us moved out here the same day. Okay. And I felt like a gunslinger because it's Los Angeles. Like, look at these pussies. Yeah. We work bars and we know how to do anything on stage. Right. I, you know, I might even play a guessing game with you. Okay. Go ahead. Um, these are, uh, one's dead now. Okay. And one is uh, career dead, like long time, but both in the, this is 1980, it was October uh, 20th, 1986. We all moved out together. Okay. But from your area, though, they're, both, they're of, both New Yorkers. Okay. You know, but not hipsters, not hipsters, like Long right, Island. Right. And, yeah, yeah. That's you know, one from. became sort of like a very well known as a great comic. Can okay. You think of who it is? Uh, either one of them. Well, Long Island uh, guys, I would think Seinfeld, but that, no, 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 nothing like nothing that. Nothing like no, that. No, okay. I'm talking about bar acts. You know, oh, like bar acts. They can really like like uh, us, like pros, like uh, can handle anything. Uh, uh, like get huge laughs. John. Uh, oh, you're gonna Mul get it. Mul Mul there you go. Yeah, Mulroney. Mulroney. Why wow, you got Mulroney. it on the first? Guess. I love Mulroney. You got it on the first guess. Yeah. He destroyed. Destroyed. He could do audience work like destroyed. nobody else. Destroyed. He was brought up in bars. Yeah. And that's what we, I came out with him. And can you guess the other one? No. Who is he? Richard Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Yeah. Jenny. I saw Jenny when I first came to Los Angeles at the improv, you know, one of those showcase shows. Yeah. Everyone's doing 10 or whatever. And I mean, it was, the guy just blew the roof. Oh, he's unbelievable. Crushed. He could it. take a piece of material and take it down to the carcass. Right. There's nothing left. No, nothing left. He exactly. was a brilliant guy. Yeah. Which is what killed him. Yeah. He was right, so, right, he was right, so right. in his head. He used to call me like at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Shoo, shoo, Richard Jenny. Right. Shoo, I met this chick. Shoo. Yeah. You get three lines with one phone. You get four whole buttons with a, he would have the all. Yeah. he would have the whole diagnostic test on what to do with a phone Yeah, if you live with a chick. Right. Oh, like, that's great. I met a chick, show on yeah. a plane. And he was so brilliant. And we came out here gunslingers. That's what I felt yeah. like, gunslingers. And I remember when I ran into Chris Rock. And again, with the insecurities that we have, we think no one knows us. Uh -huh. Like especially a superstar like Chris Rock. And Chris right. Rock was actually using my audience at Comedy Magic Club because I had great audiences to rehearse for the Oscars. Oh, okay. And Jenny was one of the writers backstage. And I'll never forget, he, like, comes up to me, like, you know, yeah. that I'm, like, this guy that he's watched. Right, right, right. And I told him, I said, oh, yeah, you got Jenny back here. I moved out here with him and Mulrooney. And I'll never forget, he goes, you, Jenny Mulrooney? <laughs> you and Jenny Mulrooney? He was oh, like, that's great. He was so, like, impressed, like, because yeah. he knows this is, like, we're, we're pros like you are. You I know? think it's how you're brought one, up. one of the reasons why Chris Rock is so good is because he's a student of comedy, which I, yeah. a lot of guys aren't now. Oh, that's a good you point. Know, and that's I, how he knew who yeah, we were. Yeah, does he know? Of course, if you're in this game, why not know everybody? I mean, right. I know everybody from I know Jenny's act to to Mulaney, you know John Mulroney's act to all right. everybody. Right, I've, I've seen them, I've watched them. Right, I know everybody's act. Right Friend up to people from today, I know their act. So. It's interesting. To the me lobsters that. like a death row. Any word from the uh, governor? Yeah. He, he, <laughs> I got to tell you his first joke. His first what, joke he ever told. What is it? He Mulrooney brings him down to Philadelphia. I used to book a room in Philly. Like okay. a suburban, like one nighter, but they all came down. Yeah. Everybody came down to do the Seinfeld, Eddie Murphy, all to do one night on a Tuesday night in Ambler, Pennsylvania for wow. $150. Wow, that's great. Yeah, they came down and he says, I got this guy. He's going to be good. And Jenny tapes dollar bills all over his body. Yeah. And he walks up on stage. He goes, I'm made of money. Uh. <laughs> and I go, well, Rooney, you told me this guy's good. Yeah, right. That was what the one guy I predicted that I was wrong. Yeah. I said, this guy sucks, you know, but we became good friends. And he became one of my favorite comedians of all time, yeah. actually. he's he was he was amazing. I loved Richard Jenny. And you saw him as a fan before you were oh, a comic. Oh, man. I used to sit and watch. You got, you, there was a guy named Dennis Wolfberg, oh, who's God. now also dead. Oh, my God. I mean, this guy was. Beast. Be, uh, an absolute beast. Yeah. I would go into the improv. This is when I first came to Los Angeles. I was, what, 19 years old or whatever. Yeah. And I would sit as a fan, basically, because I was too afraid to get in. Yeah. I, I would watch those guys and go, oh, I'm not Dennis Wolfberg or Richard right. Jenny. I mean, these guys are just, wow. it's crazy what they're doing. And, you know, just Den Dennis Miller and on and on and on. That's who would be on that lineup. And it, unbelievable. But I think that's what people, when they come to a show with like with us, I don't see it this way, but I think they do. You know, they'll they'll watch what we did the other night and go, "Oh, I saw 
10 amazing comedians in a row. Yeah. We, we're sitting there thinking, was I better than this guy? Was this guy better than me? You know, but it doesn't make, to them, it doesn't make any difference. I thought I was the only one that thought this. No, no, no. Every, I think everybody thinks <laughs> really? that. If you, Do you don't, really? I think you're insane. You really think that, like, Santino's going, Jesus, was I as good as Shoemaker? I don't know. Yes, he just I, seems to have such confidence. I, I know, I know. I think that's a little, you know, I think Bob Seger has a song called False Bravado or something like that, but it, I think that's all a little false bravado really? that we all have, yeah. So if I got a hold of him and he became Absolutely. a bro, like, you're my new bro. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why else you're my new bro. Okay. You don't know this. Okay. I just found this out about you. I do no research on the guests, by that, the way. Good. That's I, the way, it, as it should be. Because we're yeah. old pros. Right. Because you're supposed to be yeah, organic we, we and authentic yeah. in the moment, mm-hmm. right? This is something we've learned. We got our chops doing this. Right. By having the worst hecklers imaginable. Imaginable. The situations where you're playing a guy's old garage. That yeah. He, ta- he pa- tapes over the windows right. and he has a comedy show. Yeah. You know what I mean? And It, it makes you good. And makes, I'm still yes. out there. I mean, yeah. as, as you are. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm out there and it's just, it, I don't, I fear nothing anymore going into a show. Yeah. Well, if it's my show, I fear nothing. If right. I'm on the show with other comics, I'm fearing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you know that, they're judging you. Exactly. And the worst judges you can have are smart people. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Now you're really insecure because <laughs> there's nobody smarter than stand-up comedians. Yeah. So if they're taking you down, ooh, uh-huh. it's an assassination. You don't want to be on the other side of that. I know. And it's interesting. We, as comedians, we, we tend to eat ourselves, you know, know. which is an interesting thing because we're all different. We all do different styles right. and stuff. And, and, and the audience... A lot of times you'll see, oh, that's a hack bit, and this is a oh. bit that's been done. I'm like, yeah, it's a hack bit to us because we live in this world and we're hearing this stuff every day. But to the audience, it, they don't know hack from they don't honestly they don't know headliner from feature. I hate when a when a when my feature. Are you ready for your headliner? I'm like, they they don't know who's the headliner, they who's don't. the feature, who's the. MC. They don't care about half no, the shit. No, none that we, of it. Yeah, makes any difference. We, we empower that. all this stupid. Right. By the way, you know what the word hack. To me, if you use the word hack, that's hack. Right, exactly. You can't even use it anymore right, right, for right. me. Yeah. Because you've now gone beyond. Yeah. It's not hack. It, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it, these are tools that we have. Uh-huh. It'd be like somebody doing a romantic movie. Right. And they have a scene where she goes away and then they find one another, you know, and you could go, that's hack. Yeah. yeah it's, no, it's called proven creation. Proven, pro- proven creativity. Yes, it's right. been proven over right. and over. I, like I never have a problem with Carrot Top. Yeah, and he's either. always the he's the butt of the joke, yeah. right? Yeah, or or uh, uh, the Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham. I got right, no right, problem right. with this. No. you know I might have some problem with some of them, but it doesn't matter if you're good at something and you have a prop. Right. Who's to say you can't use a prop? You know, in movies, they use CGI and every yeah. prop imaginable. Right. And what's so wrong with entertaining the crowd? Like right. That, that seems to be a yeah. weird, like... I'm not you, here to entertain you. You have to comedian. understand, yeah. you have to understand that there is a crowd. Like, I, there are times when I do some things on the road that I'm, I I probably wouldn't do if I was performing here in, you know, in LA. Right, that's the other thing you have to think about. Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> but I'm like, hey, listen, I'm out on the road. I have to entertain these people. They're not uh, professional audience members who know... Every right. comedian, they're here to be, and right. they paid, and and I'll do it. Right, and, and and the lengths I have to go to sometimes to get there, I'm not proud of, but I get there. Yeah, like you know what, the beginning of, for instance, well, you probably suffer from this as well. Yeah, being white guys. Yeah, right, right, right. You're not bleeding from the word go. Like you don't walk no. on stage and they're going, oh, there's a comedian. This guy looks like a comedian. Right, he's, he's 400 pounds. Yeah. Oh, this guy uh, is uh, African American. Yeah, you know that yeah, he's yeah. been obviously oppressed his whole life. Uh-huh. Well, this guy's got pain. Yeah, you think they look at us and go, "That's that's, that's a comedian. This guy's in pain." Yeah, or somebody that has an affliction, or or a female even, right? right? Or Latino, yeah. anything except for white guys. Yeah, right? we already have the label exactly of the you don't suffer. Right, right, right. So now we have to storytell to bring them into our suffering. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. So I will open up with. Hack shit. Uh huh. It's my own. Right. But it's like, I'm going to get them. Yeah. This is the way I'm going to get them. Right, right, right. Then I'll bring them into the storytelling. Uh huh. But if there's a comedian in the audience, I shit my pants because I'm going, oh, I'm going to have to do, a, it's only a minute. Uh huh. It's like a minute of hack shit. Right. I'm going to do some traffic stuff, some yeah. weather stuff, some local shit to get them. Of course. It's a formula. That's, yes. That's a, it's a formula and it's a formula for being successful over a long period of time. Right. I we believe. don't care what they say, but yeah. I do. That's the problem. I, I know, do. I know. So let me tell you the thing we have in common that someone told me the other day. It's my only research on Okay. You. Is it true that you have a young child? I do. How old? 
Uh, uh, she is 22 months. Wow, I love it. Yeah. You are a member 20. of my club called I the am. Dodds. I yeah. Mean, I have a, it's called the Dodds, the, <laughs> the Dusty Old Dad. Dusty Old Dad. I love it. You're yes. in the Dusty Old. You know who's in our group? Johnny Who? Bench. The, how, Hall of how, Famer. How John? Oh, he had him way late. I golf. I Steve golf with Martin he, too. He, just had a kid. He, he's right. like seventy five. That's a major yeah, dot. Right, that's a grand right, dot. Yeah, that's a grand dot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it's awesome. I right. have a, I have a seven year old. Seven. And, okay. But yeah. you also have older children yeah, as well, I have right? Tw- twenty two, sixteen, and eleven. But uh, oh, yeah, okay. I'm all so that's over a the pretty place. Good, that's a good spread. There. That's a good get, spread. Yeah. About to pick up my son in college, and we're driving across the country. Oh, that's fun. When he jumps out. Yeah. And you know, typical me. I don't, you know, are you this way? Because yeah. I got to pick up a gig to pay for the trip. Oh, that's perfect. Did you get something? You know, I got a great one. Oh, good for you. I got um, the place where they filmed The Shining. Oh. The Stanley Hotel. Oh, is it? Is, did they really film it? Like the Overlook is the is the. Oh, that hotel is real. Where is it? It's a haunted hotel in Estes, Colorado. And oh, guess really? what? I'm going through Colorado exactly. And I booked, I booked two nights there. Gonna pay for my trip and put us up oh in God, a cool place. It. You know, I just did. A, I, I just uh, went out the other night and had drinks with Jeff Die, and he said he did some hotel in like Idaho or something. It was like Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and he he compared it to the Shining Hotel. He said, "Oh, really? Like, yeah." He says a really good. He's game. got a little powerhouse in him. You mean as far as uh, he's got a little? He's got you know he's younger than we are, but yeah. he's got a little bit of that powerhouse. You know, future. Yeah. Well, not future. He's currently. Yeah. He brings it like he's, he's got good, chops. Funny guy. Funny guy, good guy, you know, young guy. Power. He's got a yeah. he's got a power to him, a confidence yeah. to him. He's got to get. He's just got to get over that hurdle of being a handsome, you know, tall white guy. Right. That's going to be tough right now. That's the oh, yeah. <laughs> Hated. Yeah. Right. Hated. Yeah. The uglier and older I get, the better off I am now. We're all better off. Yeah, maybe right they'll now. start feeling for me. Yeah, yeah, they will. <laughs> we're going to reverse it now. It's going to be eventually. We'll walk gonna... on stage yeah. and they're going to go, oh, oh, this poor guy. This old guy's still I'm with up. him. I'm with yeah. him. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock. He's still, he's just starting the second show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to we're gonna be the oppressed now. Yeah. And by the way, with ageism, it's starting already anyway. Not that anyone's feeling sorry for us, but, yeah. oh, it goes on. Believe oh, me. Oh, it is. I had a the... guy yelp. My the worst heckle I could hear. Do you know what it is? What you know? What I, he yelled up to me. You in suck. Chicago. I, no, well, no, not I you heard. Suck. I no, heard specific. you suck once at one time, and I've never been more rattled than that. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know how to come back from that one. It's the one you you the, you go you think of right away. You think, but you it's very rarely said. I heard it one time in St. Louis. So it, direct, yeah, and it just rattled me. So anyway, this one rattled me. What was it? <laughs> you go, boomer. He called oh, me a boomer. Yeah, yeah. that's like mm-hmm. oh, and then walked out at the same time. Right. It was his last word. Yeah. It was his parting word. So I couldn't <laughs> say anything else back yeah. to him. I thought it was worse than you suck. Right. Yeah. You suck. You can make fun of him for, for not coming up with uh-huh. something more clever. Sure, but sure. this guy, he pulled the boomer word, which yeah. is a new word, you know, insult for people. And the, and the way they even make it more insulting is they go, they go, okay, boomer. Yeah. Like that makes oh. it like, oh, whatever, boomer. He did you, throw, you don't an, know he what. threw an okay. Basically, yeah, they're basically saying, you don't know what you're doing. You yeah. don't know. Like you're so is, out yeah, of it. You're so out of it. Yeah. You feel sorry this, for you. This, this old shit, this yeah. hacky shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that was the worst heckle I ever got. Yeah. You okay. know what I hate about about the world, though, is once they hear this podcast, now people are going to yell, they'll yell yeah, it right. up now. Exactly. That'll be the new thing. Okay, Boomer. Well, they'll, specifically to me, because they know it bothers me. Yeah. Because people want to take you down. All right. Of I had a heavyweight boxer friend. Yeah. And people would constantly pick fights with him. That guy was literally, he fought I am. heavyweight championships. I think in, in on, if you ever watch that Andre the Giant documentary on HBO, it's fantastic, by the way. But he, see, talk, yeah. uh, who, uh, he talks about that. That people just always wanted to fight him everywhere he went. Even Andre the Giant, who was, oh you know, but that was just, just to say they fought Andre the Giant. Wow. Yeah. I saw him a week before he died in France. Oh, really? Isn't that crazy? Like doing what? Like, like random. At the, the hotel I was staying, he was a regular, he ate there all the time. Yeah. So there he was, tiny little hotel uh, restaurant. And That's crazy. Know, I saw him one week, time week later. at a French restaurant in New York City. I happen because to be, he likes his French yeah, restaurants. Yeah, he must like French restaurants. Oh, he is André. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. He was a, a, yeah, a yeah. giant. Yeah. I don't even know so, if that's how you say it. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> did you ever study language in high school? I mean, just, you know, Spanish and I, for about a, a minute. I just to. Yeah, yeah, just because you had to. Doesn't it piss you off that you didn't study it more now that you I, live in California? Yes. I'm, you know, it's funny. I'm my, upset with myself. My daughter, who's, na- I mean, speaks more Spanish than I do, and she's. Pretty much bilingual at this point. 
because of our nanny and stuff that it's amazing to me that she understands more than I do. Wow. Yeah. Bilingual. Pretty much. My kids, my kids, I, I was told to do it. Yeah. But we never committed to it. Right. You know, cause same thing we have, you know, yeah. The help. Yeah, you know, those yeah, white sure, guys, sure, we yeah. have the help. We have the help. I mean, <laughs> But they're God. always Spanish yeah. in this area. Uh-huh. And by the way, when you were growing up in New York, I'm sure you're the same as I was in Philly. Right. Landscapers were all white. White guys. Yeah, they're yeah. white guys, like yeah. my family. Still are, actually. My friend. Oh, yeah, they are. My yeah. neighbor growing up on Long Island, he owns a landscape And business, it's a big and business. And whole crew is white guys. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's a, I did that for years. Yeah. I, we called it cutting lawns. Right, cutting lawns. You know, you yeah. do a little weeding. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, but here... They got, uh, oh, it's, I think it's exclusively. Right. If you saw a white guy doing it, you'd be like, something's terribly, went terribly wrong with yeah, this Yeah, it's guy. either like, a punishment. Yeah, <laughs> he's got just fresh out of prison, can't get a gig anywhere else, something like that, you know. <laughs> That's, this is the mind of comedians, right. folks. This is how we think. It's, it's, outside, it's outside of any proverbial box yeah. that you could be in. So now, now, do you have, <laughs> at this point in your life, well, I do want to get back to the, having a, is that your first child? It is my first child. Wow, that's yeah. even more of an anomaly. Yeah, that's, that's we started crazy. every, but I've started everything late in life. I really did. Oh. Like, I didn't have any success in in Hollywood until forty. I, forty was I had not. I was waiting tables up until forty. That's I was, you know, like bartending and waiting tables. Yeah, so we have so much in common. I'm going to yeah. find out if, if, if we're going to take it back even further. The childhood and everything comes late. Right, right, right. My puberty was weak. Ridiculously late. Is that right? I don't even know when. I couldn't even tell you when. Oh, I, I was five I one. But five I, one in high school. I won the shortest of the school. Really? They posed me next to this Eric Farber who was six eight, and he had a fro that made him seven two. Yeah. And they just to pose, just to make it worse. Yeah. And Paul De Blasey won funniest. That pisses me off. Nah, I didn't to win this funniest day. either. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. He, Paul De Blasey wins wittiest. He's a teacher now in the LA school district. That's but anyway, funny that you remember four. who it is, though. I remember my guy, Billy, remember? Billy Brennan. He won funniest. Of course, of course you I don't remember. Know what he does now. This is what fuels yeah, us. Yeah, I know. Aren't you fueled by the, your yes. past? You know, absolutely. Uh, but the people you resent, the people yeah. that picked on you. This is what leads us to do what we do. Of course. 100%. That's the pain. I, I believe <laughs> if you talk to most comedians, there is something. I, whether it be a breakup or whatever, that there's a, there's a specific moment they decided I'm going to be successful for to piss whomever off. Oh God! You know? I yeah. was backstage once on my I had a national television show and they're about yeah. to announce me. I literally was going down the list. <laughs> it's great. The list of the girls that yeah. shot me down for yeah. the prom, which was thirteen long. Right. Thirteen <laughs> shot me down. Little little old Craig. I grew finally in high school, but yeah. beginning of high school, five foot one. So that's five foot one. That's five, particularly ninety two pounds. Yes. Wow. In high school, and it was yeah. really not a good thing. I was. Not, it was. But it led to comedy. Yeah. So I have that list of people that you know picked on me, stuffed me in lockers, right. you know wedgies, uh-huh. all those things that happened. You know the trash cans upside down, the whole deal. Right. So you got the list. I'm going to get even with them. And by the way. You never do. You never do. And you, you know what? Even, what's even worse than They're that? They're not at home going. I, oh, I could have been with a yeah. comedian. They, it, it, what's even sadder is when you. I, I. I think one time it was a couple of years ago. I ran into somebody. They weren't on my list of that, but it was still somebody I would be happy if they were impressed by my career. And they didn't even know. They were like, they were like, "Hey, Chris, what's going?" On? And I'm like, "What are you up to?" And I'm like, "Oh, you haven't heard, you know." But so it was like, "Here I was." He's asking you what you do yeah, for a yeah, living. That's even worse. Like here I was, like pining away for their. Uh, I know. And and they did just even they're like they're living their lives too and don't even concern themselves with us. I always thought to myself, I'll be on a Tonight Show or something. <clears throat> when the Tonight Show was something, right? You know, when it wasn't watered down by other Tonight Shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, of course, so it was yeah. Johnny Carson. And that's yeah. what you. Uh, so I, I just remember thinking, if I get on there, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna put it out that my world cultures teacher from tenth grade, yeah, Cindy Kellogg, if you're out there, <laughs> I'm single. This was like oh a literally God. an image that I had right. that I was gonna tell Johnny, can you get in touch with Cindy Kellogg yeah. for me? Oh, that's amazing. I still want to know what she looks like. Oh Cindy, my God, Cindy Kellogg was was she a teacher or yes, she was in the class? Teacher, she was so hot. Well, bro. now she got to be ninety years old. I don't care. Oh, okay, because it's locked in. Yeah. It's like got it. 90. Well, I don't know. I mean, that I makes imagine. me that makes me no, 87. If she, if your, she wasn't that much no, older. If she was your teacher, she was probably 10 years, 20 years older than you. No, no at the time. No, no, 
No. Say you're 16. Don't think she was 36? No, not even close. Oh, she was okay. about 24, 25. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah I could still I always, I, I always thought my teachers were so much older. I'm like, they were 23. You always 23, think that. You know? They, they were, I know. Yeah. How about parents? Right. Now, we're older than people we it's consider amazing. really old. It's a, I look back at my, yeah, it's amazing. Right? Um, Your friends' parents, the older ones. I know. Of which, by the way, our kids are yeah. <laughs> They're going to suffer for this. Yeah. Of us yeah. being older parents. I know. My whole goal is that they don't say, is that your granddaughter? It That's happened my, to me two nights, two days did ago. Not, I was, I was taking the, the baby around the It's the biggest fear you could possibly have. And a guy, and the guy yeah, who was a neighbor of mine walking down the street, and he goes, how's that granddaughter of yours? <laughs> and I don't think I look like, I think I'm like, I keep, as I like to say, I keep my shit tight. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like some old man walking down oh, the street. I'm laughing because I'm in a yeah. nightmare spiral right now. If I, that happened to me. Yeah. I think they keep it quiet with me. They, right. Yeah. I had it one time. Not with my, actually, it was with my wife. Yeah. And it was our second date. She was helping oh. me sell merch. Yeah. Her second date 15 years ago. And, and they she, thought she, she was, was help, your daughter. He says, is that your That's daddy? That's even worse, I think. Oh, stop it. It is. I think I was, no, I'm sp- still spiraling. And yours, <laughs> oh, okay. is worse. yours is worse than that. All right. That's fine. I'll take it. It was the second date, yeah. though. And I, I thank God she's never heard it again. Yeah. You know, now being with me, she's old. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll age anybody. <laughs> right. Any, but, but eventually. Oh, my God. That's, it's all so sad. You had that happen. Yeah, oh just like a couple days ago. And what'd you say to the guy? Well, the funny thing was, I think he was with his wife, and I think the wife was like, that's not his <laughs> grand. Like, are you crazy? He's They're the always, father. The and wife so, is always there yeah, to so shut I the idiot up. I think she had to explain to him, because I've since run into him since, and he hasn't said it again. So <laughs> I think that he, he was corrected. They think yeah. it's some, oh my God. So I try to get in shape. I, this is a line in my act, actually. So uh-huh. I went for a run. Right. And I haven't run in a long time. About yeah. two blocks in, someone pulls a carver and yells out, Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I got in. Yeah. I just drove. I just, I, I'm so, right. like, so paranoid about this, you know, picking her up at school. I have right. these moms in LA, it's worse. Yeah. I have these moms who go, What are you doing here? Yeah. Have you had that happen? Not yet. Like, we're are you signed in? School yet. Are yeah, you signed yeah. in? And, oh, right. You're not yeah. in school. Oh, wait till you have that. I'm already dreading it. We went to look at a couple of schools and just, I could see that would definitely being an issue. Are you going to go to private or public? Private uh, initially, I think. And then, really? you know, who knows? Maybe things will change. Maybe well, private initially. Like your kid needs private for well, kindergarten? Pri- they have better blocks? I don't know. Build? I listen, I just do what my you go wife with the tells wife. me to do. Oh, yeah. How old is she? She's 38. Okay. Born and raised here, right in right in the heart of like Bella Beverly Hills, Bel Air area. So Did you meet her this doing is comedy? Her town. No, I met her via one of those apps. I hate to say it. Not. We hate to say it, but that's how it happened. I know. Really? It's it sounds like it's it's like when we used to say I met her in a bar and you were almost <laughs> embarrassed to say that. Now that's that's almost like, Oh, I met her in a bar. That's interesting. <laughs> You know, because nobody does that anymore. That never happens. What line did you use? Yeah, right, right. So we you met on a like bio, those, a profile. We met like those Bumbles and Tinder. I think no it was Bumble. way. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen those apps. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've never even seen them. Oh, I'm thinking I, about wandering there. Just it was a good the time. They were a good time. They were a good time. You, would, If you ever looked at it, you'd be like, wait, it's this easy now? But I'm af- I know. Uh, yeah. I'm afraid to put my bio up there. Don't, yeah, yeah. I it's, can't put a bio up there. No. You know, so that's what I'm afraid of. But you too. have some some degree of, of fame, so it is pretty exciting because they go, oh, that's Craig Shoemaker. No, yeah. no, no, but I don't want them to. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I want to use another, you know. Right. I mean, oh, I used it to my advantage. Every picture I had on there was like me with Chelsea Handler. <laughs> <laughs> Your bio yeah. picture had somebody everyone. had with other woman. Every, oh, it. every. Chelsea, everyone. Oh, that's a riot. Yeah. You on the set oh, laughing with totally, Chelsea. Totally, totally. That's yeah. your bio photo. That was it. I, I used, oh, I used it to my advantage. So I was about to say, when I would meet women, I always enjoyed it. My friends called it the comma rap because okay. the comedy rap, you know, right. you're, you know, you use the comedy to get them. Yeah. So I remember, I maybe once of right. all the women I dated, I did not know who I was. Yeah. I was, I was like impressed with myself. Okay. She turned out to be a lesbian, but still. Right. But uh, <laughs> I did sleep with her. Sure. So, oh, good. Oh, yeah. I did get yeah. there and I'm going, I did this yeah. on my own. Good for you. But then she told me, I was so upset because yeah. I really thought it was completely on my own. Uh-huh. She said- she was doing a tanning bed, and they give you a choice of what to put in the headphones. And it was, and then you. It was me. Oh. It was my CD they put in her headphones. Yeah. So there, that went there. There. So, so in other words, I've never slept with anyone unless they saw my show. Okay. But I'm impressed 
Yeah. It, unless you tell me that your second date, she came to see you perform. No. You Let know me what? hear it now. Come on. I'll tell you, she is very, very rarely come to, I think maybe twice ever. And it's a good thing. I'm glad. To, we have we the keep, same life. I'm glad we keep these worlds separate. <laughs> One time she's like, maybe we, she came, I was doing Reno on New Year's Eve, the Laugh Factory in Reno on New Year's Eve. And she came and she, you know, she was like, hmm, I get it. Like, I don't need to come on the road anymore. <laughs> yes, yeah, so and it's not great. Well, more, Reno's not the place. I know, that. I know. But it was all—it yeah. was New Year's Eve, so it was a little bit better than Reno mm. can be, you know? Yeah. In, like, Feb, you know, February wouldn't be great, but it whatever. It was Reno, yeah. It wasn't yeah. great. Yeah, But she was just like, this is it? You know, this You is could have a Lamborghini in Reno, and it turns into a Kia as soon as right, you cross the, right. the, the city lines. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that is, right. that's not the place you take her. No. I, 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 I wish I was there to coach remember, you on that one. That was a bad I know, move. I know it was a bad move. But it was one of those things where, you know, at least there was, at least we had, you know, uh, uh, casinos at the very least, something to do after yeah. the show was over. Yeah. With yeah. like, yeah, but look I, around. It, honestly, it had been my first time in Reno. I didn't, I didn't know You didn't Reno. know what to expect. No, I didn't know yeah, Reno at it's all. It's a little sad. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I, it's so close that I <laughs> want it on my list, but then again, I don't want it on my list. Yeah. If you want to go back, by the way, I have a connection there to, okay. to work there. If you want to go right. back to Reno. Sure. And I take, can. and take I, wife for my wife's a little, to, for a little <laughs> kid dying to go with back. the daughter. I remember you with like, your granddaughter. Yeah. Like while I'm on stage, she has to go, she has to go like eat by herself and stuff. And that's a sad situation, you know. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah. My wife is. I don't. I can't even think of the last show she saw. Yeah, it's I, it's so much better off that way. I know some is. couples where the husband, that like the wife or husband or whatever, is in the audience like every show. Every I'm show. Like, oh, that would drive me insane. Yeah, unless they were selling merch, I, right, or something. something yeah, yeah even that's kind of yeah part of your. Uh, you know, your posse, they're like right. your tour manager or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, I can sort of understand that uh-huh. when you're that uh, right. you know, hooked up. Uh, yeah. you know, but I I don't even know how I feel anymore because there's part of me that says, really, am I, am I you've like heard enough before? Like um, you're, you're at your limit with me. Right. And by the way, now that you have a daughter, now she has a daughter, uh-huh. oh, you're out anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. you're so no. you know, go go do your little comedy oh, skit. It now. has been, and then my wife is you know because of the pandemic, whatever, working from home. So anytime I go on the road now, she's like, please leave. She goes, is, is it right. a, is it just Friday and Saturday? Is it Thursday as well? I'm like, no, just Friday and Saturday. She's like, oh, can you make it Thursday too? So <laughs> yeah. you can pick up another gig. Yeah, you're, you're going for press. Yeah, even right, though there is right, no right. press anymore. Yeah, yeah so. I did a gig in uh, my for one of my first gigs out there was, and I told the audience, I go. My wife booked me on this gig. Yeah, <laughs> she, yeah right. She's, she's got me out and out. gets ten percent. So yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Oh yeah, they. She so. wants me out. Yeah. yeah. It the pandemic has been very difficult on it relationships. Is a, it is a lot to uh, to 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 be on anybody. You know, to be with anybody that that yeah. long is a especially lot. now. And you had a newborn during this, not yeah. newborn, but very young. Right now, how active are you? I mean, I'm you're not at active. the point where you're coaching yet because no, not yet. But yeah. Uh, you know, like you said earlier, I do, we do have some help. So that does help. Uh, yeah. cause it's a lot. There's been weeks where my, you know, my nanny has taken off for the week for whatever reason. And, uh, I, it's all me cause my wife's working during the day. Oh, what's she do? Uh, she works for Netflix. She's a Netflix executive. She's, she does well. It's a nice, That's we great. have a nice life. Don't, don't you love that she hasn't given you anything yet? <laughs> I mean, it is. You know, it, I mean, I, I I found the one woman who works at Netflix who has zero to do with giving anything. Like she works on in the art portion of it. Like, oh, you know, she comes up with. Yeah, she's the, the one most who, she can do is someone she had lunch with in the lunchroom, and I know someone who might be into content. You yeah, can go. I'll set you yeah, up for a pitch meeting, not, but I'm out of it uh, after I'll, that. I'll say the, when when I when I finally decided. I knew my lot in this business is when I it got good again, because mm-hmm. I, I I know I'm not Netflix guy and I know I never will be Netflix guy. And once I decided I was fine with that, everything w- worked out fine. Yeah, it's all been good. Well, it's I, nice. She learns a nice living too. A yeah, steady. Yeah, yeah. You got uh, health seven, benefits. She's been there seven years. Comedians, we don't get anything like no, that. No, yeah, that's unheard. Like seven We're years s- is unheard of on at Netflix. They're a weird. Really? Yeah. So it's been good. Yeah, she probably knows a few people that I know over there. Also, yeah. not in the buying department. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it's a, great. No, but No, it's not. I'd like to somebody, if I want some damn in, I've got so many projects to pitch. That's the other thing is, don't you find that, like, when we go out on the road, this right. is what I want to explain to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. We know what people want. Uh, that, exactly. We 
have our finger on the pulse. They grew up in the mailroom with William Morris mm-hmm. and don't know anything. Uh, they base things on I think fear you see and it, trends. I think you see it in, t- in television a lot, especially yes. in network television. I was watching something, I won't say the name of it, but last night on CBS there was an actual... You know, like starring three, Jeremy, Jeremy Piven. Starring Jeremy Piven. There was actually like a three, you know, camera sitcom. Yeah. Uh, you know, shot on a soundstage, uh-huh. and it was a new sitcom, and it was so like bad and, and and so old and felt so old to me that I was like, I just don't think they know any better. I don't think they've seen how comedy, like the beats, are different now, mm. and yeah. they they wouldn't know that because they're not out there. They no, they're not. I was in a writer's room. We were, yeah. You were written for a sitcom? Oh, yeah, many, many. Oh, and they resent yeah. you. Right. Because yeah. you're out there earning money. And, right. You know, oh, yeah. I used to have to leave on fr- on Thursday or Friday. And they Same were, here. Yeah. They hated me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I come back with a tan. Right. Where, where were you? I was in Hawaii. I had a couple <laughs> a couple nights in Hawaii. Yeah. Where were you? Well, we were here in the room right. for 10 hours a day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hated. Yeah. Yeah. Be, and you have a name. They don't have a name. And they're mm-hmm. pitching themselves to be on the next season. I know. And uh, work with other writers and stuff like that. I don't understand. Honestly, I, I will say this. I don't understand the writer's room without any stand-up comedians. I really don't. I, I just, it doesn't make any sense. I know there are brilliant writers who are not stand-up comedians, but a st- you get a room of stand-up comedians, your show will be 10 times better for it. Absolutely. You know where the punchlines yeah. are. You know where the beats are. Right. You know what people, what makes them tick. You also know what has been, what is a premise that has been off to you, you know, like yeah. they don't. They're like, oh, is that, that's, you know, like airport food or whatever. And they're like, oh, is that something that people are talking about? I'm like, yes, it's been, it's been, it's out there, you know, so <laughs> don't use that one. So I don't know. It's, it is interesting. It's, it's, uh, it's something that, um, I am glad I experienced it. Yeah. You know, I'm glad I've experienced every aspect of Hollywood. Totally. But I would like to run Hollywood. Yeah. I'd like to run it with you right. being my vice president. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind <laughs> if I was the lead. Uh, yeah. You'd you be mean? my vice president. Okay. We know. Mm-hmm. It's like we can pick the menu. Okay. That they eat. Do you, is there you don't do foie gras no. in Idaho. Okay. No. No. They're not going to eat it. True. Exactly. No, they don't know what it is. They're not going to eat it. They're not interested. Right. But I will give them something nutritional and tasty. Uh-huh. Right? Right. But also has fat. Of course. <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? Because that's what they want. Yeah. Right. But they don't work that way here. They work in fear and trends. I'll and- say this, though. I believe that 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 old school model is going away and it's being replaced by things like this, by, by, by podcast and things like this. It's true. And they are, they're becoming less and less important. And I think it's killing them. I, I really do. Mm-hmm. I think this town, look at the people we performed the other night. Half those guys are, are, are not on television and they, you know, Andrew Santino sells out uh, theaters right now. I know. And, and, uh, Andrew, he's Sant- on television. That's well, not true. but he's not on television in a way you would know. On him. a sitcom. Yeah. He's well. He was on. He, but on he's Hulu. a fifth lead on on Hulu or something. He's not. Yeah. On, he's not Ray Romano. You know what I mean. The the reason why he's selling out theaters yeah. is because he's on a podcast with Bobby Lee, and it gets you know a hundred thousand downloads a week. Wow. That's who's coming to his show. That's crazy. Yeah. So oh, and all those guys. I mean, many of them. Uh, Lou, you look at these Tom Segura's and all these guys who are selling theaters now. They're not. They're not on TV. Mm, that was. Oh, that was the only way to go. But when I moved out here, right, you had to have a sitcom. Right. And uh, <clears throat> I remember when I won this award. It was in the 90s. I won this com- Comedian of the Year or whatever. Who did it? Like eight? The, is that the, eight, the comedy American award? Comedy American Awards. Comedy Awards. It was the yeah. only thing we could have is close to Oscars. It was yeah. on ABC. It was a really yeah, big deal. I remember deal. it. Do yeah, you? The, the Ace, they called it yes. or something. Yeah. yeah, American Comedy, whatever. Ac- I don't know. With American Comedy it Awards. A, it was a huge deal. It was because the previous winners, and everyone had a sitcom back then, right? right. So I'm looking, I'm going, if I win this thing... Uh, like um, Ellen DeGeneres won, Jeff Foxworthy won, yeah. um, you know, uh, Seinfeld won, uh-huh. right? So I think I'm going to get a, I'll have my own sitcom about a gay redneck in a show about nothing. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing the right. math on this. Yeah, yeah. But as usual, like you, late in life, uh-huh. I win in 98 when that was the end of the comedians having sitcoms. It. I know. Isn't of that, course. Yeah. That's my timing. Yeah. Before that, it was Drew Carey and... Tim Allen and it, the list was endless. Yeah. The Paul and, Reiser and everyone had a sitcom. That was the only way. That was the only avenue to making it. Ray sure. Romano. Yeah, I know. And then the, it was yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Then the, the phase was over. Right. Just when I became the Isn't comedian. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But don't you feel like I feel 
knowing, you know, I don't know you, but I know you were, I feel you're in that same conversation as those guys. Uh, I mean, when you, I mean, I've mentioned your name to several people that I'm coming to do your podcast and every one of them knew who you were. And really? I'm talking, you know, comedians these days. You got to understand, I have zero awareness of this. I know. I but, assume when I walk backstage uh, the night before, by yeah. the way, I did that too. I walked to this new place called right. the Comedy Chateau. I assume that no one knows me. Oh, and in the comedy do, world, if they do know me, you. there's a bad reputation. They say he's an asshole, he's a hack, he's a thief. Yeah. I always think all assume <laughs> those things. <laughs> I that's, haven't heard that's that about I, you. No, I haven't. You're I, lying. No, I haven't heard anything bad. Really? No. This is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I, I remember. You're my I'll, favorite guest I, now. I will tell you. A We're story. actually overtime, and I, I'm, okay. I'm, you're still. You're my favorite. I'll guest. I'll tell you one story. This is. I'm talking maybe 30 years ago. Yeah. Could have been. I somehow was in about Bar me Barney's Beaner. Yeah, about you. It, get, it gets to you. I'm in Barney's Beaner. Yeah. You remember this place? Down of course, Barney's I lived around Beaner. the corner. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so. They have I'm a no. Point. They have a. It was anti-gay. It's even they, though it's in the middle were. of a gay, they, gay yeah, neighborhood. They had, they, yeah, that was their thing. Yeah, they had an anti-gay thing. I was there not too long ago with Nick Swartzen. Loves oh, that really? place. He lives there. Yeah, he lives right around I, there. And he's I there. Even know it's he, still he, there. He, he was there like every day. Yeah, that's his spot. This is during the day and everything. But so go ahead. Thirty years ago, I go yeah. into. I'm nervous about this story right now. You're sitting at the bar. What? You're sitting at the bar. No. Yeah. This is thirty years ago. It got to be close to thirty years ago, if not thirty years ago. I'm at the bar, and it's definitely me. It's definitely 100% you. And wow. uh, and some girl I'm with says, oh, my God, that's Craig Shoemaker. Oh, come on. And it was like, and I, at that point, I was like starting out in comedy. And she's like, you should go say hi to him. I'm like, I'm not going to say hi to Craig. That guy's a let, like, what? no way. Oh, my God. And I never did. Is... But so now, that, now, 30 years later, this is the third time we've met. <laughs> kind of. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's also crazy you wouldn't say hi. I'm yeah. so not a legend. I've never uh, yeah. had a sitcom. I know. I've never had but any. <laughs> you were a big deal back then. Oh, you know? my God. For whatever reason. I, you know, I don't. For whatever reason. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that didn't come I, across I know, right. No, you, know, you, you better hope that's edited no, but you out. you know what I mean? For whatever reason. No, no, no. I have no idea no, how you became you were like, a legend. You, it's even better that you were a legend in the fact that you were just like a crusher at clubs, you know? That was the legend. Right. Yes. Jamie yeah. Kennedy was a guest uh, recently. Yeah. He said the same thing. Right. That became known. To me, that was better. I didn't care about about you know, credits. The, the, yeah, the credits. No, yeah. I was like, oh, he's yeah. like a club crusher. That's what I saw with you, and that's what you do. I mean, yeah. I I love that. You know, club crushers. You know, I'll, I'll go with that all day long. Me too. Over over the hipsters, the cool yeah. cats, the sitcom guy. I'm, thinking, the, yeah. I'm supposed to work tonight back at that place and Sunday. Which place? The place we met. Oh, really? I'm supposed to go back again and then again two days later. I'm yeah. literally debating whether to do it. That's how bad my insecurity is. That's, oh, no. You got to go. Oh, I, 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 I have yeah. a hard time coming up with short material. You see, but what you did. And I can't what, do the Love Master. You but know. What, you do that, what you did that night is great. You, you, uh, you, you know, you do a little audience stuff, which work kills. A little you know? bit, yeah. You and did a you lot. Back, I mean. You had you to know, with the helicopter. I had to with the helicopter. That's and, a heckler. And, and, That's worse than you and suck. Honestly, <laughs> honestly it is. And honestly, I went up, as you know, you and I know, if you go up on one of those showcase type shows yeah. where it's 10, 10, everyone's doing 10 or 12, whatever, it's about when when you go up. At the time you go up, sure if you go on too late, going too early, it's, yeah. it all matters. Yeah. And I thought I went up at the exact perfect time. I know there was a helicopter. Well, and Alexis Grossman did a nice job. Right. She really and I think lifted were, the level. And she's insecure, too, by the way. Were, oh, I thought course. she was going to bomb. Right, right, Based on her beforehand. Yeah. I'm going, oh, this poor girl. Right. She slayed. I couldn't, and she set it up for you, right? I know. But I think there was this. There was there was two, two uh, people who went on before me who were both of them new to comedy, new to stand-up. And I think once I got up, they were like, oh, this oh. guy's, a, a, he's different. He's a pro. Got and you, you could feel that in an audience and you see that. Noise. Then went, then it was you, then it was on and on. Now we oh, yeah. deal just You had me pros. shit myself, yeah, though, yeah, because yeah. you did audience work. That's a tough yeah. thing to follow. Audience yeah. work is hard. Uh, audience work is hard. It's yeah, a, it's hard a, to follow. Because then, they, then they're going, oh, this person. I just, I worked with a guy recently. That's yeah. all he does. Right. Yeah. I had turned on, but I said, I'm the headliner. I said, I didn't want to pull status on him, pull rank. Oh, I hate when they do that. I agree with you. And I, I said to the guy, what would you have yeah. done? He literally only, and he goes, and I said, can you do material? Yeah. He says to me, I don't have material. I only do audience work. He's an audience warm-up. That's his uh, job. Yeah. That's oh, what I he, think I, I probably know who it is. You do? Where was it? At the Chateau? No, 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 uh -oh. no. This, is, uh, this was in, but God, if you guess this one, 
So Gary Cannon. No. Oh. But he used to open for me. He's another one. I get, well, he's an audience warm up guy. He's a total ah, audience warm up yeah, guy. He's great. That's I love a great Gary. example. Yeah, yeah, he's a good yeah. buddy of mine. Right. But don't want him to work with no, me. No, I know. It's not a good I setup totally for agree me. With you. He you know, he picks on the guy with the Coles shirt. Yeah. <laughs> he runs well, with that. <laughs> the funny thing is, I always say this. I'm like, you know, people are like, why don't you like this guy? I said, I don't like it's not that I don't like them. I said right. I said they're very they're good comedians. They just take the room to a different energy than That's right. uh, than I they take the room in the in the wrong direction. And the energy's not about you. Right. Exactly. It's about that relationship that yeah. they have. The people still remember who they made fun of while you're walking on stage. Right. Now I was able to piggyback on one of yours. Yes. You identified this girl as young the in young, high school. I'm with was, the high yeah, school or whatever. Yeah, right. And I went right on top of that and said, I'm dealing with someone who doesn't know what cursive is. And it was great. And boom. Crushed. So I, it's, yeah. thank God, I piggybacked that one. But Otherwise, the, I was screwed. That's the beauty of <laughs> doing those type of shows. And if you're a pro, you can see that. You can see that and right. pick up. You had. I'll yeah. say this about Alexis Grossman. Yeah. You see, I, I told this after the show because I know, I know her a little bit and she's new. I said, this is why you have to... There was a girl who went on, who was on before her, yes. Daphne Springs, who I like. Right. She did a whole thing on ass eating or whatever. Then right. she gets up, Alexis, and she does a whole thing on ass eating. I'm like, see? And that's why, you, it, not that your joke was bad, it just had already been touched upon by somebody else. And you got to you gotta be able to, to, to maneuver around Reference that. it and then move. That's it. Yeah. You know, it, I wouldn't even do that. It was so weird. I had an opening joke, a brand new opening joke. Yeah. Brand new. I was going to debut it that night. Right. And you know what it was? I said, yeah, the booker, you know, he texted me while I'm driving. I can't stand it. I got big fingers, and the, and the, uh, the L is next to the K. And I said, yeah, I can't wait to get I'm going to I'm gonna uh, lick ass tonight. Uh, oh, my God. That was going to be my joke. Yeah, yeah. See? And but you, I took it out. But you're smart enough to know. You're like, so, I thank God is, I watched. This has already been it touched upon. It would have bombed. Uh, exactly. So I think you might have thrown a lick ass. No, uh, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, yeah. So people, people, if you're listening, you want to be a comic, by the way. You got a couple of pros here that are right. that are giving you some tools. Do they listen though? <laughs> no, the, right, absolutely. Alexis not. seems like she does. She yeah, seems Alexis like is, yeah, she's she, very, yeah, very, yeah, very yeah. humble and sweet, right. and yeah, she, and, nice and also insecure. Yeah, yeah right. add all that up, and you have a yeah. stand-up comedian. It's a long road, you know. And that's what you got. It, it, it's tough to tell people starting out that. Um, yeah. it's a long road. It you know you're not going to be famous in ten years, and maybe not even in twenty. It's just that it takes a long time. To and get don't good. look at the destination because there's yeah. no defined destination. Right. You know, for every time there's a Dane Cook and he got there from my space, yeah. what's my space? You right. know what I mean? Like right, right, right. Everybody's got their own journey. You can't copy someone else's yeah. journey. You just have to stay present and stay you. Be authentic. Be real. That's why you're my guest today. What a great way to wrap it up. Perfect. So authentic. So you got the chops. You got the goods. Guy, we have so much in common. I can't believe we haven't hung all these years. Let's I hang, know. like That's, for real. I, I, tr- I could have made this happen in Barney's Beanery 30 years ago, <laughs> but I was too intimidated. We could have been the best of friends all these the years. If you would have just come <laughs> yes, up to this, this, right, this, this right. big star yeah. uh-huh. uh, who, who never thinks that yeah. he is. Anyway, Chris Frangiola, go see. What's your... Uh, Handles. Uh, handles is Chris Frangiola, F uh, R A N J O L A. Everything is all that. Chris Frangiola, my podcast called Cover to Cover. Listen to that. And uh, yeah, thank you. This has been a blast. I know. This is one of those you want a sequel right away. So yeah, you're going right, to have to right, make right. the trip up here to Westlake. By yeah. the way, with parting gifts for you, you don't do that on your podcast. No, absolutely not. You don't not. even have guests, do, you brat no, bastard, you selfish bastard. I do it out of my garage right. just ramble on for now. <laughs> yeah. There's, okay. So Chris Frangiola is our guest. Make sure you. Uh, what are they? What are you supposed to say? You say uh, download us uh, yeah. the app. Uh, Just tell everybody about yeah. it. Give us like a nice it. rating. Yeah, hashtag it. Hashtag, hashtag us. This. What is the name of the podcast? Enlightened up. Enlightened up. Yeah, yeah that's what it's about. I hope you up. felt enlightened today. Hope and you, you know did what you do? Yeah, leave a review on Apple and all that. The reviews help. People look at your podcast and they see how many reviews really? you got. And, it, it, and they, a good review. They get excited. A good review. That, good. That good helps. helps. But any review helps. But good is, really? of course, good is better. Really, don't yeah. even say the other. I'm going to edit that out. Yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> Chris Frangiola is our guest. Make sure that you remember, everybody, it's tough out there. There's a lot of darkness, a lot of stuff in the news. Just ignore it. Turn away from it. Go to Chris's podcast. Go to mine. And uh, just remember, enlighten the fuck up, all right? Hey. See you next time.